Hey everyone, imagine a world where powerful AI tools aren't just for these like tech giants with billions to spare. That's what's got everyone buzzing about this company, DeepSeek. Yeah, DeepSeek is a Chinese AI startup and they've thrown a curveball at everyone with their new large language model or LLM. It's called R1 and it's really turning heads. They're challenging big players like OpenAI. Yeah, and <laughs> so we're gonna be doing a deep dive today into this new Deep Seal R1. So we're going to be exploring what makes it tick and why it's causing such a stir and what it could mean for you, the listener. And trust me, it's a lot more than just like a tech story. This has implications for everything from global economics to the way we just interact with technology every single day. Okay. So first things first, mm -hmm. what exactly IS Deep Seek R1? I know it's an LLM kind of like chat GPT, but what makes it different? Yeah. So you got it. R1 is similar to chat GPT in that it can understand and generate human-like text, but it's built differently. One key difference is its chain of thought reasoning. Imagine you're trying to solve a really complicated math problem. R1 can actually show its work. So instead of just spitting out an answer, it breaks the problem down step-by-step -step logically so you can follow its process. So it's not just a black box. You can actually see how it arrives at its conclusions. Exactly. And you know that transparency is a huge deal especially when we're talking about AI making decisions that could actually impact our lives. Another really unique aspect is its mixture of experts. Okay, what's the gist of that? Think of it like assembling a team of experts yeah. for a project. You wouldn't ask a plumber to do electrical work, right? R1's structure is similar. It has all these different modules and each is optimized for specific tasks. This actually makes it super efficient, allowing it to perform at a very high level without requiring massive amounts of computing power. Ah, so that's part of how they managed to train it for so cheap. DeepSeek trained R1 for a fraction of the cost of its rivals, something like $5.58 million. That's less than some people spend on an apartment in New York. It really puts things into perspective, doesn't it? Especially when you compare it to the tens of billions spent by Google, Microsoft, and OpenAI. One of the social media threads argued that $5.58 million figure might not tell the whole story. They're suggesting that the number likely doesn't include all the years of research and development leading up to that final training run. It's like saying baking a cake only costs a few dollars for ingredients. You're forgetting about the cost of the oven, the electricity to run it, and developing the recipe in the first place. They're achieving these results without a giant kitchen, so to speak. But if they have such a lean operation, how are they managing to create such a powerful AI? Part of it is definitely that efficient MOE architecture we talked about. But there's another key ingredient, the open source approach. DeepSeek released R1 under the MIT license meaning anyone can use it, modify it, even commercialize it. And that's completely different from what companies like OpenAI are doing with their models, right? Exactly. OpenAI and others are keeping their recipes a secret. You can use their models, but you can't see the code or modify them. But with R1, anyone can actually tinker under the hood, contribute improvements, and even build their own custom versions. This open source thing is fascinating. It really makes you wonder, what could this mean for the future of AI? The potential is huge. Imagine a world where AI development isn't limited to just a handful of large corporations. Smaller companies, research institutions, even individuals could contribute to the advancement of AI. We could see an explosion of new applications, all built on a foundation of shared knowledge. Are there any potential downsides to this open source approach? That's a really important question and one that's being debated intensely within the AI community. There's always the risk that someone could use this open technology for malicious purposes. Let's talk about what makes R1 tick, performance-wise. How does it measure up against the industry heavyweights like OpenAI's GPT-4? R1 really excels in specific areas, especially coding, math, and complex problem solving. For those tasks, it even outperforms OpenAI's O1 in some benchmarks. And remember, this is all while being drained for a fraction of the cost. But it's important to remember that R1 isn't perfect. It has some limitations, like its performance in chess playing, and it can be a bit sensitive to how you phrase your questions. It's almost like it's still learning and developing, much like a student would. That's a great analogy. R1 is brilliant in some areas, but still needs practice in others. To really understand its strengths and weaknesses, we need to look a bit deeper at the different flavors of R1. You have the full-sized R1 model, which is the most capable, but also the most demanding computationally. Then you have this range of distilled versions ranging in size from 1.5 billion to 70 billion parameters. What exactly are parameters? Think of parameters as the knobs and dials that control how the AI model processes information. The more parameters, the more complex and nuanced the model's understanding can be, but more parameters also require more computing power. 
So these distilled models are like streamlined versions of R1 designed to run on less powerful hardware. Exactly. And that's where things get really interesting in terms of accessibility. These smaller models are based on either Meta's Llama 3.1 or 3.3 or Alibaba's Quen 2.5 models. Remember that social media thread speculating about R1 running on personal computers and smartphones in the near future? That's talking about these distilled models. Hold on, are you telling me that my laptop could potentially be running an AI as powerful as ChatGPT? If the trend of making these models more efficient continues, it's a real possibility. Imagine having access to that kind of AI power anywhere, anytime, without needing a connection to a massive data center. Before we jump into the future, let's break down how those distilled models work. Why are they more efficient? If you're trimming down the recipe, shouldn't it be less capable? It's not about removing essential ingredients, but rather about optimizing the recipe for a smaller kitchen. One key technique is called knowledge distillation. So they're essentially training these smaller models using the knowledge from the larger, full-sized R1. Exactly. It's a clever way to maintain a high level of performance while reducing the computational demands. Okay, so we've got a powerful AI model that's been trained on a shoestring budget, is open source, and could potentially run on our everyday devices. This DeepSeek R1 is turning out to be a real game changer. But there's another layer to this story, right? Something about geopolitics. This development also has significant geopolitical implications, particularly considering the current U.S. export controls on AI chips to China. Those controls were put in place to try and limit China's ability to really develop advanced AI. The assumption was that access to the most cutting-edge chips was absolutely essential for any progress in this field. But DeepSeek seems to be like turning that assumption on its head. Yeah. They're showing that ingenuity and efficiency can be just as powerful as brute force computing. It's like a David and Goliath story, with DeepSeek finding these really clever ways to work around limitations. It almost makes you wonder if those export controls might be backfiring, spurring innovation rather than stifling it. It's an interesting perspective for sure. DeepSeek's success definitely raises a lot of questions about how effective these kinds of restrictions are in this globalized world where knowledge and talent can flow so freely. So what does this all mean for the global balance of power in the AI field? Is China poised to take the lead? It's hard to say for sure, but R1 is a really powerful signal. Yeah. It shows that China is a, a major player in this space and that they're capable of developing world-class AI, even with limited access to that latest hardware. What does all this mean for the average person? How could R1 impact our daily lives. That's where it gets really exciting. Think about that social media thread we were talking about earlier, the one speculating about R1 running on personal computers and smartphones. If those distilled models keep improving, that could be a reality a lot sooner than we think. Instead of relying on cloud services and powerful servers, we could have advanced AI right at our fingertips running locally on our devices. Yeah. It would be like having like a super intelligent assistant with you 24-7. It could help you with anything and everything from writing emails and scheduling appointments to analyzing data, or even generating creative content. Before we all rush out to buy R1-powered smartphones, what are some of the potential downsides of having this kind of AI so readily available? One of the biggest concerns is definitely privacy. If these AI models are processing our personal data locally on our devices, how do we ensure that data is safe and protected from misuse? It's like inviting a stranger into your house, right? You want to make sure they're trustworthy. Exactly. Another concern is bias. AI models are trained on these massive data sets, right? And those data sets can reflect the biases of the people who created them. They could perpetuate and even amplify existing inequalities. If you train an AI on biased data, you're going to get biased results. So how do we make sure that these AI systems are fair and equitable for everyone? That's a huge challenge that researchers and developers are working on right now. It's essential to build these systems with fairness and transparency in mind and to constantly monitor them to make sure they're not perpetuating harmful biases. You mentioned that R1 could completely revolutionize the way we interact with technology. But what about the potential impact on the tech industry itself? If R1 or similar models become widely available, what could that mean for these companies that have invested billions of dollars in developing their own AI? It's very possible that we could see a major shift in power. The companies that have traditionally dominated the AI landscape could face more and more competition from startups and smaller players who can use these open source models to build new products and services. Kind of like the old guard facing off against a new wave of more agile companies. 
Could this lead to a more diverse and dynamic AI ecosystem? It's possible. Open source models could really lower the barrier to entry for AI development, allowing a much wider range of players to get involved and contribute. This could create a more vibrant and competitive market, which would ultimately benefit consumers with more choices and lower prices. But wouldn't this also create challenges for those smaller companies? They might not have the same resources as these big tech giants to refine and improve these open source models. Smaller companies would definitely need to find ways to stand out and provide value beyond just offering access to the basic AI models. So it's complicated. There are a lot of moving parts. But one thing's for sure, this whole open source approach is shaking things up. It's really pushing the boundaries of what's possible with AI and forcing everyone to rethink the future of this technology. Open source models like R1 could accelerate innovation and discovery dramatically. Okay, I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed with all the possibilities, but in a good way. DeepSeek R1 is a real game changer. It's pushing the boundaries of AI and raising some really important questions about the future of this technology. I completely agree. It's a fascinating development that has the potential to reshape the entire AI landscape. And it's just one example of the incredible innovation happening in this field. I want to go back to R1's performance for a second. We talked about its strengths in areas like coding and math, but what about its limitations? No AI is perfect, and R1 is no exception. While it does great in many areas, it does have some weaknesses. For example, it's not very good at playing chess. In fact, it's more like a beginner than a grandmaster. It's funny to think that this super advanced AI that can solve complex equations and generate text like a human can't even play chess that well. Yeah, it shows us that AI is still a developing field. While we've made incredible progress, there are still areas where these systems just aren't as good as humans. So it's not about replacing humans, but about helping us tackle problems in new and innovative ways. Exactly. AI should be seen as a tool to empower humans not to replace us. And R1, with its open source nature and transparency, could really help foster that kind of collaborative relationship. Yeah, it really seems like Deep Sea Gore One is a wake up call. It's showing us what's possible with AI and that we all need to be thinking about the future. But you mentioned that R1 is just one example of all the crazy innovation that's happening right now. What other developments are you excited about? There's a lot going on right now. One thing that I'm really interested in is this development of what's called multimodal AI. These are models that can work with different types of data, not just text. So they can see and hear, not just read and write. Exactly. Just imagine AI that can analyze a medical image and read a patient's chart and even listen to a doctor's notes. You get a much more accurate diagnosis. Hmm. Or an AI that could understand how someone is feeling when they talk and then respond in a more human way. That's like straight out of a sci-fi movie. Are we talking about robots that can read our emotions now? Not quite robots yet, but the pieces are there. Multimodal AI is still pretty new, but it could change so many things from healthcare and education to entertainment and customer service. It's just crazy how fast everything is moving. It feels like just a few years ago, we were impressed by AI that could play games or translate languages. Now we're talking about AI that can basically understand the world like we do. And it's not just about the AI models themselves. The hardware and infrastructure that we use to develop AI are getting better too. Companies are building these specialized chips and creating huge data centers, all designed for AI. So it's like all these advancements are happening at the same time. It's like a chain reaction almost. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, all this progress can feel overwhelming sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's hard to stay on top of everything that's happening and understand how it will impact us. That's where shows like this come in, right? To help people understand all this complex stuff that's going on in AI. Exactly. And DeepSeek R1 is a perfect example of why it's important to stay informed. R1 is changing everything and it has the potential to reshape the whole AI industry. It feels like the future of AI is being written right now. Yeah. And we all have a role to play in shaping it. That's right. Everything from the things we see on social media to those targeted ads, it's all powered by AI. And as AI gets more powerful, it's only going to become more influential. That's why we really need to think carefully about the ethics of AI and make sure it's used for good. We have to make sure that AI is helping people and not controlling them. So to wrap things up today, DeepSeek R1 is more than just some new technology. It's a sign of how fast AI is advancing and how important open source development is, but it also shows us that we need to think about the ethics of AI as it evolves. That's a great point to end on. If you want to share your thoughts on the future of AI, let us know. Thanks for joining us for this deep dive into DeepSeek R1.